Hi, everybody. Thanks for clapping. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I wanted to thank you all for being here at our first TED event here at, uh, at North Broward. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for sticking it out. I hope I can make it worth your while. Um, I'd like to thank Ted. Uh, he's a great guy. It's not a he. <laughs> it's an acronym, so that was a weird joke. Um, <laughs> so I, I got a wonderful introduction from Tanya. I'm very appreciative of that. I uh, said my name is Jeremy Hall. Oh, it's not on the screen anymore. Okay. Uh, and I've been in education for 14 years now. Uh, I teach IB Global Politics and IB Theory of Knowledge. So, this talk is not going to be uncomfortable or controversial whatsoever. Thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and, and I hope that you can handle the fact that I, want, I wander when I think and when I talk. I, I'm sure some of you are like that, but I'm going to, man, I'm going to make this red circle work. Okay. Um, I'm going to start, <laughs> I'm going to start this off uh, with a quote. A lot of people are using quotes today. Um, I guess the thing to do. Uh, this is an often used quote. I don't know who to attribute it to, but you see it uh, around. A lot of people like to use it. Uh, and I might make some of my friends mad today by employing it. Um, but it goes something like this. If you do what you do, you never work a day in your life. Heard this one? Seen some nods. Yeah, nod, smiles. Um, I hate it. I hate that quote. I really, really do. Uh, and the reason that I hate it is because I do something that I am so infinitely passionate about. Um, I truly believe I was, I was made to do what it is that I'm doing. I can't imagine what else I would have done with this crazy head of mine, honestly. Uh, and it's work, man. <laughs> it's a lot of work, like a lot of work. Um, it doesn't stop. It just doesn't ever, ever stop. There are times that I look at the pile of work in front of me and I'm like, it'll never get accomplished. But for some reason it will get accomplished, but the pile will never go away. And it, you could very easily lose your mind and like end up just in a corner crying. Uh, <laughs> in an existential crisis, honestly. It's so easy. I had to start keeping to-do lists just so I could cross things off to remind myself that things get accomplished even though the work isn't stopping. Uh, and so in order to improve that situation, I decided to marry another teacher <laughs> who's just as passionate as I am. Uh, and so it really never stops because we go home and we run this gamut of like catharsis and strategizing and support systems until we both pass out and go to sleep and then mumble about teaching incoherently in our sleep. <laughs> Not making this up, she's nodding right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it happens. <laughs> so I love what I do and yes, it, it is a lot of work. Now, in order to address this situation, there is an industry that's born out of this part self-help part, professional development type thing just to address teaching. Um, and the self-help industry itself is, is huge. I'm sure that you've all encountered one of its infinite faces out there, right? The beginning of this calendar year, self-help industry was valued at $10 billion. I know, I looked that up, I was like, $10, $10 billion? Uh, because it addresses everything. It addresses, uh, you know, dating, health, exercise, whatever profession it is that you work in. Um, there's a particularly big one for teaching. Um, when I first encountered this industry, I keep saying this industry like it's a nefarious, kind of like 1984 Orwellian, uh, <laughs> at least it is in my head. Uh, I first encountered this industry when I graduated eighth grade. And because I am incredibly intelligent and charismatic, um, <laughs> Why'd you laugh? <laughs> I won a lot of awards that day. You can shake my hand later. I know. Eighth grade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and one of the awards was a framed certificate and a book. Certificate doesn't matter. I, I don't know what happened to it. I don't even remember who gave it to me. Um, <laughs> there were just so many. Uh, <laughs> but the book, the book is what matters because the book 
There's actually a very famous book by a man named Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And 13-year-old me was straight up <laughs> I was like, what's up, Dale? You trying to say I don't have friends? Who are you? Who are you? So I didn't know that this was such a famous book and really the foundation of this industry that I, I keep referencing. Um, so let's, let's hit the gas. Let's fast forward. Okay, now we're, we're back to me here. 14 years in education, and uh, I've encountered lots and lots of versions of these types of books in my industry, in my profession. Uh, we read at least one new one every year and adopt it as a school and try it out as a community. Uh, and they tend to fit two different models, one of two different models. One is sort of a concrete numerical structure, and the other one is a gimmick. Sometimes they blend the two, but it's usually one of those two things. Uh, the concrete numerical structure, you have eight steps to this, or 12 categories of this, or the five styles of blank. And if you follow this model, you will be successful. The other one, the gimmick, uh, you are, ugh, geez, I don't know, uh, you're an astronaut, and, and your school is a spaceship, you know, or <laughs> you're in a prehistoric tribe. Like, how do you build civilization? Um, you're in an ant colony, <laughs> and you've got to find your voice and role. Uh, regardless of, of which one it is, they both promise the same thing, that if you follow this model, you get success. Your classroom is the place to be, your teaching is awesome, your students are so amazing, they leave the school, they immediately change the world. Fireworks. Just follow the system, follow the steps, be the ant. I wonder what that one looks like, honestly. Um, I'll write it later. Uh, but what I posit is that at the same time, we also know that good teaching is about being reflective and it's about differentiating because there's no such thing as a copy of a copy of a copy of a situation. There's no such thing as a strategy that just works every time, every year, in every classroom, in every country with every different alchemy of students. It doesn't work like that. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's an ever-evolving sort of, you know, miasma of so many different circumstances and contexts, and that seems to fly in the face of the promise that if you follow this structure, if you follow this design, everything will work. I'm not trying to say that these authors are bad people or that there's no merit to even utilizing those systems or using them as a reason to think about what it is that you're doing, of course. But to buy into it wholesale is almost like buying into a snake oil salesman. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with the myth of Sisyphus? I see like English teachers raising their hand. Okay, Bill's, Bill's got his hand. All right, cool. A couple of you guys. I'll, I'll give you the brief version. Classic Greek mythology. Uh, before the gods ruled the universe, you had the Titans. They went to war against each other. Gods rose up against the Titans. Gods won. Zeus and his ilk, right? They end up taking over the pantheon. And the Titans are all punished. Individually, they're all given these punishments. You're probably familiar with this guy, right? Holding up the earth, Atlas. He was one of them. That's his punishment for all eternity. Now, poor Sisyphus, his job is to roll a boulder up a steep mountainside all the way, struggling to get to the top, and just when he hits that crest, the boulder's going to fall down to the bottom. He has to go down, and he has to roll it back up. All eternity, rolling, fall, rolling, fall, Sounds nightmarish, doesn't it? Just tragic. Imagine that for all eternity. It's very easy to see what we do the same way as teachers, as educators, because every year is rolling that boulder up the hill and then seeing it fall to the bottom and then starting over. It's the workload that never, ever, ever goes away, no matter what you check off the list. It's the fact that there's never the point where the boulder's at the top of the hill and you're like, I did it, I'm done. And there's something to say about the human condition there. You know, we're mortal, we're finite. It's one of the things that makes this job so challenging. But we crave the ideal. We crave that solution. We crave that success. 
We crave the point where the boulder's at the top of the hill, but it never, ever will be. Success is impossible. You'll never dust your hands off, and you'll never be done. Okay, I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just a mic drop moment. I'm like, see ya. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, what I, what I posit is actually there's a different way to look at this. You know, Sisyphus's tragic struggle is, is, is awful. It, it's, it's punishment forever. The difference with the educator is purpose. I've chosen this path. I choose to roll that rock up the hill every year. New strategies, new methodologies, new students with, with new abilities and new problems and new struggles and new circumstances, engaging with my profession, what I do, what I'm passionate about on the local level, on the regional level, on the international level even, rolling the rock up the hill. And it's gonna come back down and then I'm gonna try again. Constantly evolving and adapting, changing these things, knowing the rock will never be at the top. I'm never gonna have the year where I go, I figured it out. Last puzzle piece, I saved the princess, yay. Like, that's never gonna happen, it's never ever gonna happen in the entirety of my career. I'm never gonna have the perfect solution. But what I suggest is that unlike Sisyphus, he needs that rock at the top of the hill Mine is in purpose. It's rolling the rock that matters. In rolling the rock, I'm affecting the world. Hopefully what I do helps other people evolve and we all get better together, collaborating as a community of humans, all trying to make the world better. My students, if I've impacted them, they go out and bit by bit, they make the world a little better. Rolling the rock, that's what does it. It's gonna come back down, and I'm gonna start again. So success is impossible if the rock needs to be at the top of the hill. But if my focus is on the purpose itself, then I'm successful, which is quite the paradox if you think about it. So let's keep trying together. Thank you all so much.